offer you a class uh, based on this book called Yoga for Your Type by Dr. David Frawley. And in this text, he talks about the three different constitutional types and how they should practice. And they, they really vary uh, quite a lot. So let's go ahead and just start with our eyes closed. <clears throat> As we shut the eyes uh, to the world around us, we begin to open to the world inside. So start by just becoming aware of your body in the space. Notice if there's a desire to shift or to move anything and go ahead if there is. Fix your position or your clothes, whatever it is. And then eventually you invite yourself to the practice. You can even say your own name and then come to the practice. So yoga is an invitation to the self. Begin to notice the sounds that you hear around you. And let your awareness move from sound to sound. It's not necessary to identify what you hear. It's just awareness of sound. Begin to feel the tongue in your mouth start to rise to the upper palate. There's said to be a chakra at the roof of the mouth called the soma chakra. The soma is the essence of the moon and the moon represents the mind, the chitta. So by placing the tongue on the roof of the mouth, you begin to calm the movement or the vrittis in the mind. So this class is for harmonizing and balancing the air and the ether elements which make up the vata dosha. So our practice here now is meant to pacify these two elements so that we experience a little less fear or anxiety worry and more easily rest in our own essential nature, your sva rupam. So we'll open with a very valuable uh, and meaningful mantra, especially for vata constitution. So Ganesha is the force that grounds and stabilizes your prana shakti in the muladhara. So the muladhara is the root chakra, it means root foundation. So it's the opposite of air and space, earth. So we bring the prana down and begin to stabilize and create a foundation for ourselves. So the mantra is called the Mahaganapati Mula Mantra, the supreme mantra to the root, to the Mula. 
So this mantra is made up of bija mantras. And the meaning is not really necessary with bija mantras. With short mantras, the meaning is in the vibration of the sound. So we'll do call and response. I'll chant and then you repeat. If you don't want to chant this mantra out loud, you're welcome to chant it silently. Create a gentle lift of the pelvic floor. So gentle. Bring your awareness, even your breath down into the root. Oh, shreem, shreem, clean. Oh, shreem, shreem, clean. Glaum, gum, glaum, gum. Gana Pataye Svaha Gana Pataye Svaha O Shreem Shreem Clean Glaum Gum Gana Pataye Svaha Om Shreem Shreem Clean Glaum Gum Gana Pataye Beautiful. So please just take your time. I encourage you to move slowly with awareness, no sharp, sudden movements. Move like a graceful, flowing stream like a sacred stream. Bring our hands together at the heart, acknowledging all the wisdom, traditions of this tradition of yoga. The mantra is Shri Guru Pyo Namaha. We'll chant it once. Shri Guru Pyo Namaha Namaste. So let's go ahead and take our time. We'll come forward to all fours. So again, just moving gently. Feel no sense of urgency at all. And once you come to all fours, well, look at the hands. We want to focus on the foundation. So spreading the fingers. If you're a little broad, um, pinky fingers to the edge of the mat. And then just let your eyes close. Start to let your head relax. And now do not suck in your belly at all. Let it hang. Just big belly, huge belly. Let it go. And the weight of your stomach will begin to bring you naturally into a back bend. So start to now exaggerate that by lifting the buttocks, the chin, opening the throat, and then very gently round your back. And just pause here. Just feel that deep round in the back. Your body takes the mudra of like a hill. And then slowly let your belly just relax. Just let it go. You don't have to really do much. Lift your chin. Lift your buttocks, and then again, slowly start to round your back. You can keep the tongue on the roof of the mouth. And then just one more time, letting the belly go, letting the chin lift. 
the opener closed and then rounding the back. Good. Now, next time you inhale, let the belly drop, fill the belly with the breath, lift the buttocks, curl your toes back into your first downward dog. Sometimes we call it mountain pose because you're taking the shape of the mountain. So this is very significant, especially for Vata constitution. Vata is the wind. So the mountain holds what's called the stitta shakti, steadiness. So visualize yourself as the mountain. Very nice. Feel your breath starting to get full and seamless. Again, like the sacred stream, the sacred current of the stream is Shakti. Shakti is power. Hatha yoga is about cultivating more Shakti. Okay, take your time. Slowly walk your hands back towards your feet. So you'll arrive at the back of the mat. Good, let your arms relax, your head relax, your face, you're like no expression on your face. Good, feel the softness of the environment. Allowing the thoughts to come and go. You're not trying to not think or force the thoughts out. They just come and they go. Our hands to our waist. So it's important for your blood pressure that you come up on your inhale. So gaze towards the front of your mat, lift your chin, very good, and inhale, come up, close the eyes, bring your hands together at the heart, right, Tadasana. Bring your awareness, your mind, into your feet. So clearly this is your foundation. I'm going to settle down through the knuckles of your big toes. Good, your baby toe, and the center of your heel and then feel the muscle starting to hug to the bone. So vatas need to use their muscle, right? Protects the bone. One of the sites of vata is in the bone. So think of the muscle you know, snuggling up to the bone, protecting it. And then you're welcome to open your eyes if you like, sweep the arm wide and up, gaze up, and then arms wide as you bow forward, knees can be good. On your inhale breath, bend your knees, drop your buttocks, come into Utkatasana. Asana is for vata. Let the thighs sink. Your gaze can be forward or down. So for vata, we want to bring in and down. And then rise all the way up. Just a gentle arch back. And then sweep the arms wide again as you fold forward, Uttanasana. Very nice. Just pause. Enjoy the pause. So for Vata constitutional type, pausing may not be very familiar, but it's so nourishing for the Vata constitutional types to pause. And then again, bend your knees, sink your buttocks, come into Utkatasana. Remember, gaze down to the ground. Good. Now gently lift the pelvic floor so you feel a little lift of the root, the mula. And then inhale, rise all the way up. Good. This time, bring your arms behind your back. Interlace your fingers. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Lift the chest. Open the throat. Now with bent knees, bow forward. If you can, keep your hands interlaced. If not, then you just bring your hands down. Place no judgment on the practice. Very nice. Bring your hands down to the ground. 
slowly walk your hands forward, come back into your downward dog, your mountain pose. Good. So symmetrical asanas are very balancing for vata. Now breathe in to the image of yourself as the mountain. The mind concentrated on this present image of yourself as the mountain. Okay, from here, we'll go ahead and start with the left side. So please, leg up, take your time, and then lift your right heel, look forward, step the left foot all the way through. We'll place the back knee down. So if that's uncomfortable, you can always put a blanket under your knee, or you can even fold your mat over. Okay, now squeeze the thighs together, feel your fingertips on the ground, enjoy the breath, and then start to Again, at the base of the spine, the mula, tighten the pelvic floor muscles like 2%. And then with that stability, bring your arms up. Anjaneyasana. Very nice. Beautiful. Your chin is slightly drawn down. This brings in the Arda Jalandhara Bandha, the half throat lock. Very important Bandha for Vata. Okay, take your time. Place the hands back onto the earth. Good, lift your back knee, settle your palms, step back, mountain pose. Good, okay. If you feel very stiff in the back, in the spine, you can always bend your knees and lift your sit bones up a little bit. And you can keep the knees bent. If this feels like it brings some ease into the spine, or your legs can go straight, but nothing is forced. When you feel ready, go ahead and lift your right leg up. Look forward, lift your left heel, take your eyes forward, step your right foot all the way through. Yes, and then place your back knee down, pause, You'll place emphasis in the pause, because that's the present. Gently draw your thighs together. Think about the mula, the root. So gentle lift of the pelvic floor. And then when you feel ready, go ahead and bring your arms up. If that causes too much instability, you can always bring your hands to your waist. Good. The right side is considered the solar side. And Vata very much uh, connects to the sun, the warmth of the sun. Okay, when you're ready, place the hands on the ground. This time, you'll lift your back knee, take your eyes forward, push off the back foot, step to your half forward, so your hands come to your shins. You can lift the chin a bit, and then bow forward. Release the weight of your head. Okay, ground to the knuckles of your big toes, your baby toes, and the center of your heel. Bend your knees, drop your buttocks, utkatasana. Okay, so if your shoulders are tight, please your ears. Just bring them parallel to the ground, and now sit back. Yeah, you want the thighs to get warm. You want to feel the muscle hug to the bone, and then use your inhale to come all the way up. Just gentle arch back. And then bowing forward, this time arms forward with your knees bent. Very nice. Take a breath in and out. Again, the breath flowing like the sacred water. Okay, please go ahead and step your left foot back. Good. Let your knee come down. So just one more time, this low lunge. Again, you're welcome to keep your hands on the ground. Engage the root lock, maybe your hands to your hips, maybe your arms up. Whatever or however you're placing your body, it should connect you more deeply to the breath and to the experience of the practice.
Excellent. Let the hands come down to the ground. If they're not, lift your back knee, lift the buttocks, ground the palms, step back into your downward dog. Very good. Okay, please go ahead and step your left foot forward. Bring your right knee down. Take your time. Good, same practice. Draw the thighs in. Feel the engagement of the mula. Feel the engagement of your breath. How full you feel, how full you are. There is nothing you are lacking. You are that. Beautiful. Let the shoulders relax. So one of the teachings of yoga, Vedanta, is to acknowledge that you are Brahmin. I am that. Please take your time. Bring your hands down to the earth. Same thing, you'll look forward, push off the foot, step into your half forward bend, Ardha Uttanasana, lifting the chin momentarily and then eventually bow forward. Okay. Let your knees bend a little bit. Make a peace sign with your fingers. Hook the inside of your big toes. The thumb gently goes on the front of the big toe. Your eyes can close. And as you inhale, straighten your elbows. Hold forward. Inhale as you straighten your arms. Pull away from the legs. Exhaling as you bow forward. And now just enjoy the movement. Keep going. Every movement connects you to the present moment. And then eventually you'll hold the forward bend. So again, your knees can stay bent. Your elbows are wide. Your head is relaxed. You're not forcing it into your legs. Your shoulder blades are lifting up towards the buttocks. And then your mind is down into your feet. Feel like into your feet. You continue to do this, the feet will begin to get heavy. Very good. Please release your big toes. Good, we're gonna come through Utkatasana, so please Bend your knees, sink your buttocks to the pose. Good. Bring your arms parallel to the floor. Let the chin slide towards the chest. So there's the Arda Jalandhara Bandha. Awesome. And then keep the pelvic floor rising as you press up to straight legs. Gentle arch back and then bring your hands together at the heart. Just pause here, breathing in and breathing out. Good. Make sure our feet are hips width apart and most important is that they're parallel. Good, now as you inhale, reach the arms up. As you exhale, bring your right arm behind you, your left arm forward. You can gaze at the right thumb if you like. Good, now stay here, press that right hip forward a little bit. Yeah, that's it. So it feels like your hips are square. It's gonna intensify the twist in the upper back. Okay, now as you inhale, reach the arms up, and then of course go the opposite way. So you can gaze towards your left thumb and then press your left hip forward towards the front. Very good. Okay, now just enjoy it. So as you inhale, your arms come up. Reach up, as you exhale, you twist to the right. Beautiful, very nice, keep going. Stretch your breath, Vata needs to focus on the inhalation. Okay. 
The next time that you twist to the right, you'll hold it there. Again, you can focus on that right thumb, or if you feel more comfortable, you can close the eyes. Press the right hip forward. Almost feel like you're leaning back just a bit, but not too much. It feels like you're uprooting yourself. Take your breath into your feet. Good. And then inhale. Reach the arms back up. Find that link, that space, and then twisting again, taking the eyes back towards the left thumb or closing the eyes. Yes, and now bring your left hip forward. Very good. So Vata will have a tendency at times to be quite stiff because they get dry. So this dynamic movement can be quite helpful. Okay, please go ahead. Bring your arms back up. Good. Bring your hands together at your heart. We'll pause. And then we're going to do a similar twist, but in Utkatasana, dynamically. Okay, so when you're ready, sweep the arms wide, sink the buttocks back, Utkatasana. Okay, now bring your left hand to your right knee, your right arm up, nice, and twist. Inhale, bring your arms up, straighten your legs, Reach up, Urdhva Hastasana, and then sinking back again, right hand to the left knee, left arm goes. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, sinking down, twisting to the right. And just connect to that flow, that water, the gel, twisting on the exhale. So the twist can begin to help Vata move the waist out of the large intestine. Okay, last time, reaching up, twisting to the left. Good. Very good. And then reach the arms back up. Bring the hands together at the heart. Pause. Close the eyes. Bring your awareness into your feet. And just become aware of how you feel. Good. Okay, we're going to take Malasana. So you'll bring your feet apart. And so we're going to come down. Now let's say your heels lift, right? You can't quite get the heels to drop. You can always put a blanket uh, under your heels. And if any of you at home have a problem with this pose, you can always sit on something. You can sit on a chair and do it. You can put a block underneath you, whatever. So the elbows go inside the knees. Yes, so bow the chin, but don't sag the head. So maybe close your eyes. Sometimes it's easier to feel the pose when you shut off that master sense. So as the chin bows, you have your Ardha Jalandhara Bandha. The tongue rises to the roof of the mouth, a form of Kechari Mudra. The pelvic floor gently draws up, but nothing feels harsh, right? Or sharp or rigid, especially your breath. As you inhale, feel your breath. Move in and down to the base of the spine. As you exhale your breath, feel it rising up towards the crown of the head. Inhale, draw the breath in and down to the base of the spine. Exhale as the breath rises towards the crown. Please continue. your hands down to the earth. You'll lift your heels, turn your heels out, press up. If you have a blanket, just take it out of the way. Ground the feet and you'll probably have to walk them in a little bit so they're not so wide. So here we'll have our knees bent 
you'll take your bring them under your feet. So you're basically standing on your hands. Okay, very good. Your toes come up to your wrist. Now just relax the head. Good, relax the eyes. You can visualize your spine like a tranquil flowing waterfall. The water is not raging. It's just slowly kind of trickling. The waterfall is said to hold. It's called the Soma Shakti. The Soma is the essence of the moon. It's the essence of mind. Soma is synonymous with Ananda, bliss. Good. Okay, please take your time. Remove your hands. Good. Root them on the ground. Step yourself back into your mountain pose, your downward dog. Good. Let's let the knees come down to the earth. So Ashtanga Namaskar is actually quite a tricky transition. So your fingers are spread. Good. You keep your toes curled under and actually lift the chin. So when you're coming down, you don't just come straight down, right? Because you'll collapse. You bring your chest forward. So look forward. That's where you'll go. Bring your chest forward as you bend your elbows and lower down. And then uncurl the toes. Bring your arms forward. Good, and you can grab a hold of your triceps if you want. That's how close you want your elbows. Yeah, good. And then spread the fingers wide once you re-extend your arms out. Okay, look back at your feet. Ideally, you basically want your pinky toenails on the ground. So here we are, Sphinx pose. Close your eyes. And one place you wanna settle is your knees. Let your knees settle down. Let your pubic bone settle down. Let your breath settle into the space behind your closed eyes. We can practice what's called psychic breathing. As you inhale, see the breath move from the space between the brow back to the midbrain. As you exhale, see the breath move back forward. Inhale, you draw the breath back towards the midbrain. Exhale, you move the breath back forward. As you're moving the breath through the forehead to the midbrain, you can chant silently the mantra Om on the inhale, Shanti on the exhale. And then gently bow your chin. Take your elbows wide. Rest your forehead on your hands or turn your head to one side, whatever's comfortable. Feel your breath in your low back. As you inhale, feel the nourishment of the breath. As you exhale, just removing any kind of fear. Inhale, nourishing yourself. Exhale, removing the unwanted parts. You are not out of control. You are totally in control of your breath of your thoughts, of your attitude, 
the emotions. Look to the breath. Stay near to the breath. Holding on to all of that as you slowly bring your arms forward. So this is not about how high uh, you can come up into the pose. It's about the quality of the movement. So again, the eyes can be open or closed. The chin is slightly drawn in. And again, we move like the swan. That's called the hamsa. As you inhale, lift your right arm, your left leg. Exhaling as you release, sit down. Inhale, left arm, right leg. Exhaling as you release it. And just continue this, no rush. Right arm, left leg. Left arm, right leg. If you like, on the inhale, silently chanting Om. On the exhale, Shanti. After you do left arm, right leg, then relax again, rest your forehead on your hands, or turn your head to one side, whatever you're comfortable with. And then please take your time, bring your right arm over your head, you'll roll through your right side, coming onto your back. Good. And then once you come onto your back, if you could please have your knees bent. Yeah, your feet parallel. Good. Your palms facing downwards. Close the eyes and bring your awareness to each fingertip that is resting on the ground. So amazing when you just bring your awareness to the fingertips resting, it starts to calm the senses, the elements, and brings harmony to the mind. Especially for the Vata constitutional type, less is much more. Settle into your toes, into the knuckle of your big toe, baby toe, and to the center of the heel. Stay with this idea that your breath is flowing like the sacred stream. And as you inhale, slowly lift the buttocks and the arms up. Arms go over your head, chin slides to the throat. As you exhale, you gradually come down. And just connect to that simple movement of dynamic bridge pose. Setu Bandhasana, Sarvangasana. Feel the breath. Feel the movement. And if you enjoy it, the silent Om Shanti on the breath. The next time you pause momentarily. Palms to face upwards. Relax your shoulders. Keep the feet grounded. And now as you inhale, 
Walk your shoulder blades. Try not to move your feet. If you like, you can interlace your hands. Getting the shoulder blades a little closer together so you're not resting your neck bones. If it's okay, you let the chin come towards your... Yeah, good. Now relax your buttocks a little bit. Feel the inner thighs releasing down. Remember, it's beneficial for vatas to feel the heaviness in their legs. So clench the butt much less to experience the heaviness in your thighs. That weight brings weight into the feet, brings foundation, which will to achieve their desires. Om Shanti. Beautiful. Please take your time. Release your hands if they were interlaced. Walk your shoulder blades. Bring your buttocks down. Bring your legs up and your arms over your head. Yeah, just simple. Yeah, legs will be straight up. That's it. If your shoulders are tight, you can always bring your arms wide. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, and then from here, hug your knees into your chest. Good. And then we'll rock to one side, whatever side, doesn't matter. And then come on up. Good. Uh, and you'll sit just right on the edge of it. So you're just almost like barely using the blanket. Okay. And then the legs will come out. But, so again, just basically the fat on your butt is up there. So we'll twist to the right first, and these are great because it moves the stagnation from the large intestine. So bend your right knee and bring your foot over your left leg. Okay, great. Keep your legs straight, or if it's okay on your knee, lean to the left, knee back. You do what's appropriate for you. Now wrap your left arm around your right knee. Pause, close the eyes. Feel your foundation, which is clearly your buttocks, your left thigh, if the leg is extended, and your right foot. Feel these points of contact with the earth. The bija or seed mantra of the earth is lam. You can even feel or hear or repeat silently lam. Inhale, bring your right arm up, lean over to the left. So you're just bowing the right side of the body and then reach the arm up, bring the hand behind you, fingertips face away from the buttocks and then slowly twist the upper back. Now, keep the eyes relaxed, resting over your eyes. As you twist, it may have a tendency to kind of spiral the energy up. So come back to those points. Your right foot. Lum. Lum. The earth is your source of nourishment for the body or the Anumaya Kosha. Your breath is the source of nourishment for your pranic body, your Pranamaya Kosha. The mantra is the nourishment for the mind or the Manu Maya Kosha. 
Lam. Would such grace and ease slowly come out of the twist. Extend that right leg out. Pause in Dandasana. So both legs are extended. Flex your feet. Feel the muscle hug to the bone. So important. And then please bend your left knee. Bring your foot over your right leg. Okay. The right leg straight or lean to the right and bend the knee back. Wrap your right arm around your knee. Good. Take a look at your left foot and make sure the knuckle of your big toe is there. It's grounded. And then close your eyes and then just pause. Feel your sit bones grounding, your right thigh. up behind you your fingers face away from you and gently twist relax your right shoulder relax down into your left foot remind yourself I am rooted. The earth, your nourishment for the body. Breath, your nourishment for the pranashi. Lam, the nourishment for the mind. Let go into the mantra, the mantra of the earth element. There's nowhere to go. Here you are. So gracefully, find yourself again, coming back, dandasana, extending the legs out. So the danda is the staff. So the legs are like two staffs, two pillars. Flex the feet, see the muscle hug to the bone, and then hands by your side. Good. Shoulders are back. Eyes are quiet. And if you could come back to that practice we did, in Sphinx pose, awareness of the space between your brow. Inhale as you draw the breath back to the brain. Exhale as you move it back forward. Again and again, the same pathway, back and forth. Om Shanti. Last round. And then gently open your eyes. Good. We'll go to your left thigh. Okay, so you're propped up. Now you'll bring your arms up. Turn towards your right leg and try to have the toes point up. This stabilizes your sacrum. And then start to reach forward, but you're bending at the hips. And then let your hands just come down to the ground. Very good. So from here, keep your hands where they're at for the most part. Lift your chin, look up, and then slowly bring your chin towards your throat. Your back will round a bit and bow forward. 
Now close your eyes and do that again. Inhale. You pull away from your leg. Lift your chin. Exhaling as you bow forward. Like a weight. Back and forth. Two more times. Your left leg is firmly grounded. You are firmly grounded in your breath. Eventually, you'll hold still-ish. So you with your chin slightly in for that Ardha Chalantara Bandha, or you can be more towards your thigh. It just depends on your flexibility. Very good. Imagine you have a big sandbag on your left thigh. As you inhale, feel the sides of your waist lengthen. As you exhale, gently turning slightly towards the right leg. Breathe into your back. Very good. So vata likes to connect to movement. So your breath is moving. So connect to the movement of your breath. Now prepare yourself to slowly come back up. Slide your hands towards your hips. Pause, bring one hand to each knee. Relax your right foot. Burnt. And then slowly prepare yourself to go to the other side. So left leg is straight. Right knee will bend. Very good. Okay, so your arms will come up on your inhale. Turn towards your left leg. So this is micro twist happening. Flex your left foot and slowly start to reach forward. Down onto your mat. Now as you inhale your breath, lift your chin, open your throat. And as you exhale your breath, gently bow forward. Now do the same thing, but with your, with your eyes closed. Rising on the inhale, bowing on the exhale. Remember to pacify the Focus or favor your inhale. The inhale, so nourishing. So building like the tide builds with the full moon. And then eventually you'll hold the posture. So it doesn't have to be so close. So away from the leg a little bit. Breathe into the back. As you exhale, dropping towards the earth. Your inhale like the swelling tide. Exhale as the water retreats back. Can connect to that image of the sacred waters rising on the inhale, retreating on the exhale. And then slowly 
slide your hands back. Remember, just bring one hand to each knee. Your eyes can be closed. Minimal effort, maximum benefit. Very good. And then we'll prepare ourselves for Upavishta Konasana. So you're pretty much similar, except now you'll have both legs apart. Doesn't really matter how wide, just apart is fine. Good. And then bring your hands behind you, your fingers face away from the buttocks. Okay, bow the chin. There's your little bandha, right? Bandha is lock. So you're holding the prana or embracing the prana. Now press your thighs down. Get strong and hug to the bone. Your heart is lifted. Your shoulder blades drawing deep into the back. Your breath is evenly balanced. Keeping the eyes closed. Hands forward, press your fingertips down, keep your legs strong, flex your feet, and then start to crawl your hands forward. And as you're crawling your hands forward, at the same time, it feels like you're dragging them back, like your fingertips are sticky or something. And you're pulling your chest forward as you fold forward, so you don't collapse into the upper Sick. Very good. Take the Jalantara Bandha towards the throat. The teachings of the Tantra say to us that life is a gift from the divine. And you were the point the universe was trying to make. There's a place in this world that only you can fulfill. You have fallen as grace. You are grace. Please take your time. Slowly walk your hands back. Bring your hands eventually behind. Turn your fingers away from your buttocks. Lift your chest once again. Just a soft counter pose. Press the heels out, the thighs down, the kneecaps lift. And then slowly release it. And you'll go ahead and turn around and come onto your back. Okay, if your hips are a bit tight, you can always put a blanket uh, under your head. So once you lie down, you decide what's best for you. If you'd like a blanket uh, under the head. Okay, good. And then bend your knees and bring your left ankle over your right knee, like a figure four. And then bring your left arm under the left calf. Interlace your hands around your right leg, whether it's your hamstring or your shin, uh, doesn't matter so much. Okay, great. The feet can be relaxed. The sacrum is grounded. The breath 
is even. We call the style of breath Sama Vritti. Equal wave. On the wave of the breath is Shanti, peace. All the gripping in your face goes away. All the gripping in the thoughts go away. Mind is filled with peace. Shanti. Please go slowly. Eventually, you'll change sides. So take your time. The transition from one side to the next is part of the practice. As you gently bring your knee into your chest, you press the leg and the hand into each other so that the sacrum does not leave the ground. Remember the earth is your foundation. How elegant is the breath. Now gently, slowly come out of the pose. First, bring both feet to the ground. And then eventually, we'll prepare for Shavasana. Asana for Vata. So they need support. So you can have a blanket under your head and if you would like to, you can just fold, yep, you can keep your head relaxed. You can just fold the blanket under so you're framing or supporting the head and the neck. It's kind of like you're making, just kind of stuff it towards the head. And then vatas need most support, alambana, out of the three constitutional types. So maybe something under the knees, good. And then you can always place a blanket uh, under the sacrum if you need, if you need some extra padding, but definitely over the body. Make sure you cover the feet, you cover the hands. And then 
if you have a shirt or some kind of shawl or scarf, something light, uh, placing it over the eyes. Try not to cover the nose or the mouth. Relax your shoulders. Relax your breathing. Feel your body becoming heavy. And just follow my voice after you have adjusted yourself. Invite yourself to this pose, Shavasana. In this pose, we actually can move into altered states of awareness by becoming effortless. But at the same time, alert. Please become aware of your body lying on the floor. Awareness of your body. Become aware of the effortless flow of the breath in your nose. Awareness of the coming and the going of the breath in your nostrils. Become aware of the back of your head resting on the earth. The shoulders heavy. The upper arms heavy, relaxed. The elbows, the lower arms, the backs of your hands, awareness of your back, your buttocks. upper legs, your backs of your knees, the calves, the ankles, and the backs of your heels resting on the earth. beginning to sink, sink down, feel yourself being held by the earth, your first mother, mother nature. Let go, let her hold you Feel her embrace. You are safe. You are secure. You are completely supported. Rest in that truth. Rest. And feel yourself becoming 
effortless.
slowly feel your awareness rise back into the source of the breath. Feel the nature, the origin of your breath as creation or Shakti. This force is you. Connect to that creative force deep within. Feel a sense of inner awe or magnificence within yourself. Feel the mind free from all fear, reminding yourself that you are a limitless being. You were never born, you will never die. Begin to bring your awareness to the sounds that you hear, moving your attention from sound to sound. You do not need to categorize the sound as pleasant or unpleasant. It's just sound. Bring your awareness to your body. So grateful for your body and all that it does for you. And then begin to move the body, small parts first then bigger parts. It's important to just take your time to let yourself gradually come out of this deep state of relaxation, Shavasana. Very good. In your own time, slowly begin to rock to one side. Eventually, come to seated, no rush. So finding a comfortable seat. The eyes can close. The jaw Mentally check the position of your spine. Feel that the crown of the head is over the base of the spine. The sit bones are grounded. The crown of the head is light. The breath 
is effortless. And the mantra of the breath is so hum. This is a mantra that's done silently on the effortless flow of the breath. As your inhale naturally comes in, you can hear or chant to yourself the mantra so and on the exhale, hum. The Soham Mantra directs us to the source of the infinite. Source that has no beginning. close our practice with the mantra of peace that may all beings be happy and free the mantra is lokaha samastaha suki no bhavantu we chant the mantra three times breathing in Lokaha Samastaha Sukino Bhavantu Lokaha Samastaha Sukino Bhavantu Lokaha Samastaha Suki no Bhavantu Om Shanti 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 Namaste